everyone. My name is Andy and I am from Wildflower Designs and today this video is reviewing my second level crochet class and today we'll be making the seed stitch dishcloth. We will be using the short single crochet stitch and the tall uh, double crochet stitch in a combination to make this beautiful seed stitch pattern. So here we go. So for this project, we are going to be working with our size five crochet hook. We are, going to be, we are going to be using a weight three or four, if you if that's what you have, 100% cotton yarn. We're going to need two colors of it. The colors are completely up to you. One you will be using as the main color and the other you will be using as a small little stripe going through it. You'll also need your scissors and a darning needle, whichever size works best for you is perfectly fine. Now, one more thing that I suggest you have with you for this before we actually get started are some stitch markers. You'll need two and these are mine here. They're a little bit fancy, but you can get much, much simpler ones at any um, craft store, Michael's or Walmart or well, I don't know any other one. Um, if you don't want to go out and grab one, you can just use a different color of uh, yarn. I'll show you how to do this. And I'll also show you how to use the stitch markers properly as well. But what um, they really help out with is when you are turning your work, they really help you keep the same number of stitches in each row because they will tell you when to, where to start and where to stop your work. So if you were not part of my classes and you did not check out my video last week, I'm going to start with a slip knot. And how we do a slip knot is we fold the yarn like this. We then, whoops, flip over the short piece on top of the long piece there. So I've just twisted my work there. We're going to grab that long piece and pull it through like this. Now, if you have not worked with 100% cotton yarn before, you'll find that it is not stretchy. And that is a good thing for a dish dishcloth because it will help it hold its shape even after washing and scrubbing and cleaning all your nasty dishes. So it's great for that. But I still recommend for beginners, if you're working with a five millimeter hook for the entire pattern for the chain, for the foundation chain, I suggest going up to a 5.5 or even a six because it will not give you any sort of stretch. And if you tend to be a tight crocheter as a beginner, it will help you keep your foundation chain loose if you use a slightly larger hook size just for the foundation chain. And then when you turn your work, you can go back down to a size five millimeter hook. So for this pattern, we are gonna start by chaining 23. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through that loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through that loop on our hook and continue that way until we have 23 chains on our hook and I will meet up with you at the end when I have 23. All right, so I have 23 chains on my hook and what we're gonna start by doing is we're gonna skip that first chain there. We're gonna go into that second one. We don't wanna go into that first one because we'll undo our work. We want to go into that second one there and we're going to make a single crochet stitch. So we insert our hook away from our body, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now we are making the seed stitch dishcloth, which uses the single crochet and the double crochet stitch, which are the small one and the tall one. And we're going to alternate all the way across our foundation chain. So in this next chain here, I'm going to be putting a double crochet. So I'll yarn over, I'll insert my hook away from my body, yarn over and pull up a loop, leaving three. Then we'll yarn over, pull through the first two, leaving two. And I'll yarn over once more and pull through those final two. So as you can see, this is the very short crochet, uh, single crochet. This is the tall double crochet. And we're going to alternate all the way across. And what's going to happen is those single crochets are going to pull down on the double crochets. And it's going to make them kind of pop out a little bit, which is going to give your dishcloth that nice scrubby texture. But we're going to stop here real quick while I grab my stitch marker and I'm going to show you how to use these properly. So again, I have, I'll show you with the yarn first. It, this is just simple because I know everybody will have a different color yarn at home. So what I'm going to do is in that first single crochet that I've made, I'm going to insert my hook 
and I'm going to pull through, not all the way, but I'm gonna pull through my yarn like this, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. So once I've finished my chain all the way across, and I come back to work into that first row that I've done, this will tell me that this is the last stitch that I will be putting another stitch into. So sometimes when you're doing a pattern like this where the height of your stitches are different, it's harder to tell which is your last stitch you should be working into. So a stitch marker or a piece of yarn or a bobby pin or a paper clip or anything, anything that you can kind of hook into that stitch temporarily, we don't want it to be stuck there forever, um, that will help you figure out where your last stitch is that you should be working into. Now I'm gonna use my stitch markers, but that was just to show you how you would do it with a piece of yarn. Mine are a little bit fancier, but it's all I have right now. I don't know where my, where my um, cheapy ones went. So that's what I'm using for today. So we're gonna continue along this um, foundation chain doing a pattern of single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, half double crochet. So I'll do a couple more so you can follow along with me and then I'm gonna skip to the end and I'll meet you where we turn around. So I've just done a single and I've done a double. I'm gonna go back into a single crochet. And the next one, I'm gonna do a double crochet. And then a single crochet. Oops. 100% cotton yarn is also very easy to split, which I do too. It's not something that you're gonna be experiencing by yourself. Everybody experiences it especially in the foundation chain. Once you start working back into your work, you won't notice it as much because you're going through two loops rather than just the one of the foundation chain. So I'm gonna work this pattern all the way across and I will meet you at the end in just a moment. So I'm at the end here. I've got my last one that I'm about to put in. Now, if you've chained the same amount that I have suggested for this video, you should be finishing on a double crochet. And I've calculated it this way so that each row that we do will be the exact same. There's going to be, it's just a one row pattern repeat. If you have chained a different number, that is perfectly fine. Or if you've made a mistake and you've accidentally added or taken away one, don't undo your first row just continue on. This pattern is very forgiving and it's going to look perfectly fine. You won't notice a huge change in the size, but just for this, um, I've tried to keep it very, very simple. So what's going to happen now is we're going to, if you remember, we have ch we chained one. Um, we have, sorry, we had an extra chain on our hook and we turned and we did a single crochet. So that took away the one stitch count that we initially had on our hook. So we had chained 23 but because of the height of that single crochet and we skipped the first chain, your total stitch count at the end should be 22. So again, how we're counting these is we're gonna count those Vs. You're gonna make sure that we have 22 all the way across and that will let you know that you have the right amount of stitches in this row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So we have finished on, we started on a single crochet, we finished on a double crochet. Now this pattern is going to alternate the stitches. So when we turn our work, we are still only chaining one because we are going to start with another single crochet. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna make the stitches opposite. So this is, single, uh, this is a double crochet that we've just done on our first row. And we're now gonna be putting a single crochet into the top of it. So we're gonna skip that chain that we just did, the turning chain. We're gonna single crochet in that first stitch. And this is where we're gonna stop and put our next stitch marker. Now you're going to be doing this every row, but you only need two because when we get to the end, we're gonna take this one out and we're gonna reuse it. So I'm gonna insert that into the single crochet that I just created so that I know when I get to the end there, that's gonna be my last stitch that I'll be working into. So we have a single crochet here that we are actually going to be working a double crochet. 
So that is how the pattern is. It's going to alternate the stitches and that's what's going to give you that texture to your dishcloth. So the first stitch of every row is going to be a single crochet and then you're going to do a pattern all the way across of single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. And you're going to do that for five rows of the main color. And then we are going to change and we're going to, um, I'm going to show you how to seamlessly change colors. And we're going to do a thin stripe of your secondary color. And then we're going to do four rows of that. Then we'll switch back to the main color. So just to recap, if you want to go ahead and skip, I'll put in a timestamp so that you can skip ahead to where I change colors. But if you want to watch a little further, I'll keep going for a little bit and show you how this is going to look. So I have just done a single crochet and a double crochet. So into this next double crochet from the first round, I'm going to be putting in a single crochet. And in the next single crochet from the first round, I'm going to be putting in a double crochet. So I'm changing that the stitches aren't matching up perfectly. Like I'm not putting a double crochet into the top of a double crochet. I'm doing the opposite, but it, it keeps the pattern the exact same. So I'm going to, every single row is going to start with a single and end with a double. So I'll keep going across. And when we get, when we get to the end, I'll show you why the um, stitch marker helps out so much. So I will meet you there in just a second. Okay, so, so I'm at my final two stitches here. I'm about to put a single crochet into the top of that double crochet. And then what happens here is, like I said, this single crochet is going to start to look a lot like the turning chain. So this is where the stitch marker comes in handy because it's letting me know that I still have one more stitch to work in here. So all I do is I take that stitch marker out and I work that final double crochet. Now, like I said, each row should be starting with a single and finishing on a double. You can pull your work a little bit. Sometimes it starts to frown at you. And that's what I mean by frowning and the bottom gets a little tight and then the ends kind of start to go like this because the foundation chain's too tight. So that's why I suggest going up half a hook size sometimes for beginners. So we're at the end and I've just done a double crochet. I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna turn my work and I'm right back to crocheting a single into the top of a double. So I'm gonna start this row the same way I started the last run with a single crochet. I'm gonna do just one more. So I'll do a double crochet into the next one and then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna insert my stitch marker so that I don't forget where I'm at when I turn around. And then I'm gonna continue going on. Now, another thing that I would recommend doing because these rows are a little bit wonky, when you are trying to count the rows, it becomes a little bit tricky. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got my single crochet swatch here and these rows are much more clear and straightforward to count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. When you start to count these rows because of the difference in the crochet stitches that we're doing in the height of them, they become a little bit tricky to count the rows. Now I know that I'm on row three because I'm used to looking at pieces like this, but for beginners, it's a little trickier to count what row you're on because the size of the, of the um, stitches are changing. So I also recommend having a piece of paper beside you. I should have said this at the beginning and just kind of tick off or write down whichever um, row you're working on or whichever row you finished, however you need to do it. If you want to you know, tick off when you're starting a row or when you've just finished a row, it'll help you keep track because what we're doing is we're going to do five rows. So I'm on row three. We're going to do five rows. And then when you get to your last stitch, I want you to stop and pay attention to this video again, because I'm going to show you how you properly change colors. And I'm going to be using a white for my secondary color. I'm not sure which colors you are all working with, but I want to show you how to properly and seamlessly change colors so that you don't see any sort of jog in your work when you do change the colors. So continue on for five rows, but before you do that last stitch in your fifth row, just stop and put your work down for a second and come back to this video. And I will meet you when I'm on my fifth row and I'll show you how to change colors. So I'm gonna keep going, but I'm gonna skip ahead and I will meet you 
at the last stitch of my fifth row. Okay, so here I am almost at the end of my fifth row. I'm gonna insert a single crochet and I'm at my last stitch here. Now this is where things change. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker, I'm gonna set that aside and I am going to insert my hook as though I'm going to do a double crochet. But the difference is when I yarn over and I pull through those first two, I'm gonna stop, okay? I'm gonna put my work down. I'm gonna give myself a decent amount of, oh, I don't know, maybe six or seven inches long. I'm gonna trim my yarn and I'm gonna bring in my secondary color. Now you do not have to do a slip stitch, but as a beginner, uh, pardon me, a slip knot, but as a beginner, I suggest doing it because it just helps you secure your yarn when you join the new color. So I'm gonna do a slip knot, same as how we started. I'm gonna leave a decent tail, nothing terribly long, but you know, five or six inches maybe. And I'm going to, while still inserted to these two, I'm going to put my loop on my hook and I'm gonna pull that long tail to tighten it up. Now what I'm doing is I'm basically finishing off that final step of the double crochet with my new color. And that's going to allow for a seamless color join. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've got my final two. Hold on, let me take this off so I can explain it again. So I've done almost every step of the double crochet. Now all I have to do is yarn over and pull through my work, but I'm not doing that. I'm actually gonna pretend that I've yarned over with the white and I'm gonna pull that through my two loops. So that's what it looks like. And then I can kind of tug this yellow um, and it'll tighten it up again. It will get a little bit loose while you turn your work, but don't worry, you'll be able to tighten it. So I'm now working entirely with the white yarn. I've just finished up that double crochet. I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn my work as if nothing happened. Now, I'm gonna do the first couple of stitches just to kind of secure it before I go stop and I'm gonna tie a knot. So I'm going to insert and do a single crochet. I'm not going to forget about my stitch marker because when you are changing colors, that is going to be the easiest place for you to mix up where your final stitch is when you come back and work into it. So don't forget to put your stitch marker or your piece of yarn or your bobby pin, whatever you're using, make sure you get it into that first stitch that you create. I'm gonna make just a couple more. So I'm gonna do a double crochet into the next one. I'm not changing the pattern at all. I'm doing the exact same thing. All I've done is I've changed colors. So a single crochet into the next and I'll do one more stitch. And then I'm gonna stop and tie off those two colors. So I'll just loosen my yarn a little bit there and pull my hook out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tie a, a knot, a normal, completely normal knot at the end. So I'm gonna loop over my work. Now I don't wanna pull too, too tight on that first one. Just make it nice and snug and lined up. And then on the second one that you do, that's where you can pull it nice and snug. And we're just going to ignore just as though this was part of it too, right? This is our tail from our, turn, from our um, foundation chain. We're just gonna leave those and we're gonna ignore those. We're gonna weave them in at the end. So we're gonna pick up where we left off and we are going to continue this way with the white yarn or, or, or whichever color um, you're using as your secondary color. We're gonna continue all the way across as if we were, nothing has changed. And we're gonna do four rows this way. So again, if you're using a piece of paper to jot down your work, you're gonna do four rows with your secondary color that you've chosen. And I will again meet you at the end where we change back to the main color and I will show you how to change off a color again just to make sure that you understand the concept. And we're gonna continue this way all the way through our piece. We're gonna have a, a total count of um, 18 for the rows. So we're gonna do five of this color. We're gonna do four rows for the stripe, and then we're we'll continue on with the main color again. Or if you wanna do a variegated and you wanna start a third color, that's completely up to you. But all I wanted to do was make sure that you understood how to change a color with this stitch cloth. So if you wanna do a third color, or if you wanna add even more rows of colors, that's completely up to you as well. You change colors as many times as you want to, but we will be doing a total of 18 rows with this exact pattern. So if you wanna skip ahead, go ahead and I'll show you how to work down the side of your piece to finish off with a nice border. 
Otherwise, come back in just a couple seconds here when I meet you at the end of these four rows. Okay, so here we are again. I'm two stitches away from the end of my fourth row of this secondary color. So I'm going to do a single crochet. And again, we should still be ending on a double crochet. And I am going to change colors. So I am going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through two. And I'm going to leave those two final loops on my hook while I grab my secondary color, or pardon me, my, my main color. We're back to the main color we are now. We are going to do a quick slip knot. All right, we'll tighten it just a little bit. And we're gonna pretend as though we have, we're finishing off our double crochet. So we're gonna insert onto our loop, onto our hook, and we will pull through. So we're pretending that we've just finished that double crochet, but we've finished it with the new color. So we're just gonna, again, tighten that little tail a little bit. We'll chain one and we'll turn our work. And to secure it, we are going to do a couple of stitches so that we can then stop and tie that knot again. So we'll start with a single crochet, just like we have been this whole time. We'll do a double crochet. And we'll do another single and another double just to secure it so that it's not gonna go anywhere. All right. Oops, and I forgot to trim my yarn. <laughs> So again, I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of a tail there. Trim it, and we'll move away that secondary color as we're not gonna be using it right now. And we are going to tie that knot again. So we are going to tighten it, not too tight, just a good amount. And then on the second one here, that's when you can pull and make it really snug. Now, cotton kind of, um, I wouldn't say that it mats together, but once it's been wet a couple of times, it really does hold its shape. And these tails, once you weave them in, they're really not going to go anywhere. Um, this, the material that we're using right now, it kind of almost like sticks together once it's, once it's been wet a couple of time and, times and moved around. So you're really not going to have to worry about your um, ends coming in so long as you weave them in, you know, fairly securely, which I will be showing you at the end. So again, we are going to insert our stitch marker into that first stitch so we don't forget. So again, it's right there. There's the top of it right there. And we are going to continue with our pattern for nine more rows. So we're on row one, we're going to do eight more rows once we're done this one. And then we are not going to finish off because we are going to work a nice border around the side. Now you can choose whether you want to add the border or not, but either way, I'm going to make sure that I show you how to do it so you can decide at the end of your piece whether you want to leave it looking how it is like this. Once we weave in the ends, of course, it will look much prettier, or if you want to add the border. So I'm gonna continue across and I will meet you again at the end when I am done my ninth row of this main color again. So I will see you in a sec. All right, so here I am at the last stitch of my ninth row of the main color again. I'm finishing on a double crochet, and I am just going to go ahead and pull up the loop for a second here. I can take out my stitch markers now, move those away, and I'm gonna show you how to, again, weave in your ends. Now I do have a video from last week that shows you this as well, so if you already know, you can skip past this part but it is a little bit different when you're working with two different colors because what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're, mark, you're weaving in your white into your white and your yellow into your yellow or whichever colors you're using, you want to make sure that they match so that you don't see them. So I'm going to take my darning needle. I'm going to get my yarn through there and I want to make sure that I have left a, a fairly long tail because we want to go in a couple of different directions so that the, the ends are really, really secure. Now, when you are weaving in your ends, you wanna make sure that you're trying to go as best you can into the base of each stitch because that is the most secure part of the stitch. Now, to get there, I'm gonna go down really wherever I can find my way through. I'm gonna weave my way down just a little bit here so that I can make sure that I get right into my white area and I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from my yellow part. And then I'm going to look for the base of each stitch. 
So I'm looking for that sort of V shape again, which you're gonna see. And now it's gonna be up and down and up and down and up and down all the way across because of the different heights of the stitches we've been using. But what I wanna look for is those Vs right there to weave my end through. Now I'm gonna go maybe three or four stitches across And then I'm going to turn my work, or if you're okay doing it with your left hand, you're going to go down a little bit so that you're not working right back into the stitches that you did a second ago. And you're going to go back the other way. Now, if you want to, you should be okay to cut your yarn after going twice, but I like to go three times. So I want to go one way back, and then back the other way. And then you can go ahead and trim your yarn right up close to your piece because it's not gonna go anywhere. So again, I will show you, you're gonna do this with, with all of your ends, but I'll show you again with the yellow here. What I'm gonna wanna do is find my way up the side. Somehow, just kind of follow your yarn. Don't go against it too much. I'm having a hard time getting my needle through here. There we go. And I'm going to want to work my way across the base of these stitches. So again, I'm going to go over maybe three or four and then maybe start to wiggle my way up and then I will go back the other direction. So I'm going to just go up like this wherever I can really get my yarn through. And then I'll go back the other way. So I'm going to work back to the outside now. And I mean, I turn my work as I work on it and that's perfectly fine. So as long as you're keeping track of which direction you're going, then I'll just pop it right back out the end and you can trim it. You don't have to be scared. You can trim it right up close to your piece, just like that. And this was the other one that I had already woven through, so I can trim that one right up nice and close to the end of my piece. So I'm going to do that with all of these pieces. Once I'm done that, I will join you again. We'll insert our hook back up into this loop that we hopefully have not cut because we're not done yet. We're going to go down the side. But you want to just make sure that just to make it a little bit easier on yourself, you weave your ends in first. So I'll meet you back here in just a second once I'm finished that. All right, so here I am. Everything has been woven in. There's nothing sticking out either side. It looks wonderful. And it really does. It looks great the way it is. So if you want to go ahead and finish off your work and leave it like this, that is perfectly fine. How you would do that is you would, at the end of your piece, you're going to chain one. You would snip your yarn. Uh, give yourself another couple of inches so that you can now weave in this tail and then you could pull right through and tighten up that little snip slip knot that's going to happen in the corner there you would then just weave in your piece and there you go that's your disc dishcloth but if you want to stick around and learn how to to put an edge to your piece we're just going to be using the very simple single crochet stitch all the way around the edge and it just kind of finishes it off nicely so i'll show you how to do that now so again, we're going to insert our hook into the you know, final loop of the double crochet that you just finished from your final ninth row, but in total, we've got 18 rows. What we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one and we're gonna turn our work on our side. And it's gonna look a little strange because there's no longer any Vs that you're gonna be working into. What you wanna try to do is when you're working in the side of a double crochet, you want to try and get two stitches into the side of it and when you work into a single crochet you want to get one stitch in the side of it so each row is going to be different we're going to overlap we're going to have a double crochet here a single a double a single a double a single all the way down like that now you're going to want to try your best like i said to get two single crochets into the side of a double crochet and one into the side of a single crochet so what that looks like is if you kind of pull your piece, you can see the middle loop there that's created from that extra yarn over that's created with a double crochet. I like to try and go one on the right side of it, one on the left side of it, 
and one into that single crochet. Now, if you're having a hard time seeing the side of your stitches, that is perfectly normal for a beginner. So I would just suggest trying to fit a stitch in wherever it looks appropriate. When you're done, if you wanna be completely accurate where you have two in the side of a double and one in the side of single, you're gonna end up with 27 stitches all the way down. But anywhere between 20 and 27 stitches will be perfectly fine for the side of this. So if you skip one or miss one or are having a hard time finding it, don't get too upset about it. As long as you're doing your best to kind of evenly single crochet down the side of your piece, it should look perfectly fine when you're done. So you can go ahead and do that. And I'll meet you at the corner because we have to do something just a little bit different at the corner so that we can turn our piece. So I'm gonna work my way down the side like this. You go ahead and do yours as well. And the only difference when we get to the white, we're not gonna be changing colors. We're gonna continue right across. So we're gonna have a nice yellow border all the way around. And when I get to the corner, I will show you how to properly change directions. All right, so here I am at the end. I've got, I'm in my corner here. I'm gonna try and put one more in here. And again, anywhere between, I mean, 20 to 27, 25, whatever amount of stitches you have in the end is going to look fine. If there's a little bit of a space in between each, that's perfectly fine as well. And you will notice that when I pick this up, you should be able to see sort of those holes that are showing through. That's perfectly normal. There's nothing to worry about and your piece will slowly start to kind of heal itself as you use it. And that's, that's a completely normal thing to have happen. So when you're at the corner, you need to be able to turn your work to work along the bottom edge. So what you're actually gonna do is in that final corner stitch, you're gonna put an extra single crochet in there so that you can turn your work and it's not gonna pull your corner in on itself. Now, when you're working along the bottom chain, it's gonna be a little bit um, more difficult to see where you're working into. But if you remember, we started with 22 all the way across. So you're just gonna try your best to put 22 across the bottom, somewhat evenly. So what I like to look for is where those bottom chains are kind of overlapping. I'm going to insert my hook in there and do one there. And then the next one where they sort of overlap is right here. So I'm gonna do that there and I'm gonna work across and I'm gonna try and evenly get 22 across. If you're just over 22, that's fine. Again, the edging is however many you see fit for going evenly across the bottom and down the sides. And again, I'll meet you at the corner so I can show you the corner one more time. So here I am again at the corner and I've just put a single crochet in that corner stitch. And again, I'm gonna put an extra one in there so that I can turn my work on its side. It's not gonna have any sort of weird pull to it. Now again, I'm just gonna work the exact same way that I did up the other side. I'm gonna try and get one single crochet into the side of every single crochet. And I'm gonna try and get two into the side of every double crochet. But again, if you're having a hard time seeing the side of it, all I'm looking for is that next sort of gap that I can be working into. And you will create a little bit of a hole, but it'll work out as you wet your piece and start using it. So just go ahead and try and be somewhat even down the side. And I will meet you again at the corner once more where we will work along the top of our work and then I will show you how to properly finish off and weave in your ends once more. So I will meet you at the corner. So again, here I am at the corner. I'm gonna insert an extra single crochet in there. I'm gonna turn my work. And now we're working along the top where we are used to seeing the Vs at the top. So we are gonna work one single crochet all the way across in each one. We're not doing doubles anymore. We're just gonna go one single crochet all the way across. And then I'm gonna show you how to slip stitch, which I have not taught yet, but it is very, very simple. I'm gonna show you how to slip stitch into your first stitch finish off your piece and weave in your ends. So again, I'll see you in just a sec. All 
All right, so I'm coming up to my final stitches here. I've got three left. One, two, three. One, two, and three. We've got that little turning chain that we made to work down the side. That's not actually a stitch. And you can tell because there's no base to it. See how there's a V here? That's the base to this stitch. There's nothing here. That's the turning chain that we've made. If it helps for you, when you start going around the side, you can put a stitch marker in that first stitch again, and that will tell you where to end off. But again, it doesn't really matter because we're about to weave in our ends and you won't see it at all. So to make a slip stitch, it's the same as a single crochet. You're gonna insert it into that first stitch that we made when we turned our work and we were finished, we were starting on the border. You're gonna insert your hook, pull through a loop, but rather than yarning over, you're just gonna pull straight through the loop that's on your hook. That's a slip stitch. Very, very simple. You can then grab your scissors, give yourself again a bit of a tail so that you can weave in. Especially on this, as it's the last one that you are doing, you wanna make sure that you weave this one in real nicely. And you can go ahead and pull that loop straight through. And then we're just gonna pull that nice and tight. And we will grab our darning needle and weave in our ends. Now again with this, you wanna be very secure. So you wanna go at least three directions, back and forth and back and forth. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by just kind of going in wherever I can get my hook in. I'll wiggle my way just a little bit further into the piece so that I can hide it a little bit better. And then I'm gonna go across the piece wherever I can find the base of those stitches. Now I'm looking for wherever the stitches are the tightest. That's what I'm looking for. And those are normally at the base of each stitch. So you're gonna do your best to get it through there. Whoop. I'm not left-handed, so I have to keep switching the way I'm looking at things here. So I'm going to wiggle down a little bit. And then I will go back towards the outside. I'll just turn my piece to make it a little easier for me. I'm going to go back towards the outside in the base of every stitch that I can sort of find. Pull all that through. And then once more, I'm going to wiggle down a little bit. However, I can so you can kind of go into the middle of stitches if you need to to bring your yarn down and again you're not really going to see it and now I'm going to wiggle back to the middle of my piece through the base of a few more stitches and it really doesn't matter because it is going to secure itself as the piece gets wet and used and that's what's so great about cotton 100% cotton for dishcloths because it's super durable and it doesn't really lose its shape too much. So I'll go ahead and snip that right up close to my piece. And there you have it. So there you go. Even mine's a little bit wonky, but when you stretch it out, um, normally when you're working on a piece like this, you would block it, which means you would put a piece of foam underneath, a, a fairly dense foam. You would get some needles, um, you know, sewing pins, whatever, and you would wet the piece. You get it all nice and wet, wring it out, and stretch it and pin the piece. But for a dishcloth, we don't really need to do that. That's more so if you're making a blanket or a garment or something like that. So here we go, top to bottom. You've got a beautiful dishcloth. Thank you for joining me.